Hi everyone, welcome to Wealthy Mindset. My name is Oliver, thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. Hope you guys are having a great day, like always. And today I'm gonna to be covering these stocks and the Dow Jones to give the overall market. Now I'm extremely excited for this video because from what I've been seeing, not only the Dow Jones, and by the way, I made a video in terms of why I'm bullish for the Dow Jones, and it looks like it's gonna happen, completely true, where just we're gonna skyrocket. But if you're interested in that video, it's gonna pop up here. I highly encourage you to watch it, because it's very beneficial. And all these other stocks from what I'm analyzing right now with just after hours price uh, price points, I think honestly, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, not advice. I think we're gonna go, we're gonna be, we're basically starting on the second run up. And by second run up, I mean, the first run up from January 27th. And I'm gonna show why. It's very exciting. Um, if you wanna watch throughout the whole entire video, I highly encourage it because all of them seem to be related based off Wall Street bets. Now, if you wanna see specifically just for your stock, uh, you could look at the description down below for the timestamps, but I highly encourage you to watch at least the Dow Jones portion, which is gonna be the first part. And then I'm gonna to go to the next parts as I keep going. But the first part, the Dow Jones is very important because it's gonna help us carry through as well. Now, quick disclaimer, like always, I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not a professional, and everything I do share with you guys is just my opinion and it's not advice. So do not buy and sell based off the information I show you or the opinions I do form. I do own shares in BlackBerry and I've been holding for six years. Now we're gonna start off with Dow Jones first. Just quick thing before I oh, like start, so that way new viewers know, we have an upward trend resistance line dating back from 1999's 2000.com uh, dot com bubble. Right here, resistance 1999, you can see dates right here peaked ever so slightly, had a false breakout right there. Basically in 2018, um, back tested right here, just before the pandemic, back, back tested, pandemic down here, V-shaped recovery, upward trend support line, for, uh, first touch point, second touch point, third touch point right here. And what I show, oh, and then not even just that, before I get to that touch point, um, we broke it, we broke through it once, fell through, false breakout, broke through it again, completely bullish on the uh, Dow Jones. Now, I thought it was gonna continue on this channel right here, right? But instead of continuing on the channel, I should have known. I was looking for, this is by the way, the pandemic upward trend support line, dating back from the bottom of the pandemic. I should have known the second we touched it, we were just gonna break through. I was expecting to continue on this channel and then bounce on this upward trend, uh, upward trend support line and break through completely the channel and just go straight um, like catabolic, right? But instead, we, broke, we touched yesterday we broke through this channel, and not even just that, we broke through this uh, upward trends uh, resistance line. So at this point, it's extremely difficult, by the way, this is where we closed off at uh, today, um, but it's extremely difficult to know how high we're gonna go to. I tried to look at a couple stuff here and there, and everything points to, to be honest, by the end of March, beginning of April, it looks like we're gonna be hitting 33,000 by end of March. It doesn't mean that we're gonna go just go straight to 33,000, just to let you know, it's not gonna be like a straight line. What's gonna happen most likely is obviously ups and downs, ups and downs, but we might come back down to back test either this channel before we do that in the next couple of trading days or come back down to back test this, or we could go up to 33,000 and then come back down at one point and then back test this upward trend support line. So there's multiple things that could happen. Okay, so now for BlackBerry. The reason I'm super excited for BlackBerry is a bunch of, like a multitude of a bunch of things. So we have downward trend and resistance lines that we pretty much broke through all of them and we have the last one to break just today. So if we break this last downward trend and resistance line, I, in my opinion, I think we're headed back to the levels of the January 27th all-time highs for the, in terms of all-time highs as in the last 52 trading weeks, right? And uh, because Dow Jones is heading up higher, creating all-time highs, and I know there's a little bit of disconnect between the market and BlackBerry, but still there is somewhat of a correlation in terms of the market's going up, there's a chance that a lot of stocks will be moving up in that momentum, right? Plus we have the Wall Street bets, uh, stocks going all up together in terms of conglomerate moving up towards in one direction. So there's gonna be, potentially tomorrow, they're still all gonna be going up because people see this massive price action. I know a lot of my friends are messaging me at the same time. So there's gonna be definitely fear of missing out like that FOMO action for tomorrow. So they're gonna continue at least for tomorrow, some type of positive movement to the upside, right? So given all that, we broke, uh, before I get to the resist, downward trend resistance levels and showing you that last one we need to break. And if we break it, it's going, it's going to be really good. All we have left is basically, obviously the horizontal resistance levels. The reason why I'm more interested in the downward trend, downward trend resistance levels is because when you break, the, those are the ones that keep you down for the long term, right? Horizontal resistance levels are more just like obstacles to just, pass, like they just 
they're, they're just temporary stops, like stoppage points until you actually create a downward trend resistance line. But before I get to the resistance lines, like um, always, I just show in case of new viewers, we had an upward trend support line that is still intact, which is amazing. Um, so that there's a chance that we could by September hit $30 a share by September, but dates back since October uh, 2020, back test in November, back test in December, back test in um, what is it called, January 2021. So we could have came down and bounced off this uh, upward trend support line, but we arguably could have already done that with that $9.63 yesterday because when the, the price or price action comes down quickly or comes or when the price uh, stock price drops down dramatically in a quick uh, quick manner or spikes up in a quick manner as well, the graphs don't tend, tend to show them that much unless you go to like the day moving average. I'm at the month moving average, so that's why you can't see it. So maybe that could have been the lowest point, maybe, and we reverse the upside and we might not be going lower, potentially. But it could be a false breakout, who knows. Now, to the moving average, downward trend resistance, uh, downward trend resistance lines, we broke this one. This one goes back since arguably February 4th, and we broke it just today and spiked through it. Now, it could have been a false breakout, but I don't think it could be, and then for the reasons why. So we have a January 25th downward trend resistance line, broke through that, completely clean. We had 11.50 price point, broke through that, right? Obviously today we had an all-time high of 11.70, or not all-time high, but today 11.72 high, broke through that. Now we got shot down by the moving average though, the moving average, long one moving average, is at 11.72, 11.74, 11.75. We got shot down by that. And we closed at 11.32, right? MAC line is in the positive, so that is po like great, that's good. You can see right there in the positive moving up. Now, this is the last downward trend resistance line that we have, right? And you can see that in the after hours, by the way, this is without pre-market, this is just with partial after hours, not even full after hours. We, uh, if we pass this last downward trend resistance line, in my opinion, I think we're just, we're, we're in the clear now to head straight up and not look back hypothetically. Again, anything could happen. Nobody could have predicted, for example, this spike up the last 30 minutes or hour of the trading day, right? So just keep that in mind, take everything with a grain of salt. And uh, if we break through this downward trend resistance line, in my opinion, I think we're in the clear. Now, we, what we don't want it to be is a false breakout, right? Like, alt, like for example, like right here, if it bounces down, bounces up on the moving average, breaks out, we need to pass this resistance line, which is $12.50, $12.46 to be exact, but we wanna make sure we're in the clear. So we need to pass like $12.51, $12.50 around their ballpark, right? If we pass through that, we need to be heading towards the $13 and like 50 cents, $13.36 $13 to be exact, I guess, but you wanna, you don't want to have, have false breakouts. So you need to actually go higher than that. So you need to have like $13.50. If we head towards that and not just for tomorrow, it could be the next few days, then we're good. So the main focus for tomorrow is to pass $12.50. And even if we come back down, just bounce off, off it, $12.50. So tomorrow's high, the max height I think tomorrow could be is around $13.50 for the most part. I don't think we're gonna go higher, but hey, anything is possible. If we go higher, I'll comment down below how high we could go and what the next resistance levels are. But the main focus is to pass 1250 and hit go towards 1350. That's the main focus. Now, if you think we're gonna get shot down by this downward trend resistance line, by the way, this is the last downward trend, downward trend resistance line that I could find. The last, like these were like hypothetically last major ones, but the major one, if you saw my $180 price target prediction video, um, I showed this one since 2008, downward trend resistance line that we broke, broke since December 1st, 2020. So um, that was significant. And to me, that's the catalyst that is moving us up hypothetically. Plus obviously the Wall Street bets, everybody being exposed to Blackberry's undervalued uh, and so on and so forth, right? So, but if you think this is all just hypothetically fake and it's just a false breakout and we're gonna get shot down, fair enough, that is possible, that is still in play. First support level that we have is 1150 uh, price point support level, right? After that, we have around a dollar, uh, hopefully I said $11, not $1.50, but 1150 first support level. Then next support level is 1133, I guess 1132, but it's mainly 1133. Then after that, we're looking at the 11, I, I noticed that it was around 1116, 1118 for the most part, 1107, then 
11.04, I hope we do not break 11.02, 11.04. If we break 11.04 and 11.02 and do not bounce up to the upside, then we're just basically heading down again, down to the 10.99 and then 10.95. 10, between this level consolidation period of the 10, what was it? I think it was like 10.88 to uh, 10.95, 10 10.95. So we're heading back down to that level. If you think we're going down, I don't think we're gonna go lower than 10.72. So if you think we're just gonna come straight down, 10.72 is the utmost lowest. But I think we, if, if you're not completely negative in terms of how low we'll go, then I think it's fair enough to say that we could touch 11.50 and 11.30 and bounce up to the upside. And there's that. And if, if you think we're gonna just come back down to this upward trend support line, then I think it's fair game to say that tomorrow we could hit, what is it? I guess, yeah, 1072. It's, it's saying 1054, but I honestly don't think that's gonna happen. But if you're thinking it's gonna just shot, get shot down, 1054, 1050, that's, that's purely what's gonna happen. But I think we're gonna head to the upside. There's that. Um, but if you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. I'll try to answer them as quick as possible. Um, if you have any information too, please feel, feel, feel free to share. Even criticism and all that stuff, feel free to share. Comment down below and all that stuff. And if you like this video, definitely drop a like. It definitely helps out the channel. Thank you so much. Now we're gonna go to GameStop. Um, now for GameStop, it's very interesting, obviously, the whole entire Wall Street bets phenomenon kind of stuff. We have an upward trend support line happening here, dating back from uh, December 2020, touch points right here. We have a, this, this upward trend support line dates back since September of 2020, right? Now you guys did break through it and went down and this support line down here, originally that I talked about the first one, you guys kept it in play, had false breakouts, but you guys basically bounced off this downward trend resistance line bounced off, like went up, completely kept this intact. And now you guys are above this upward trend support line that I probably should have moved right here. Either way, it's amateur movement, but whatever. So you guys are back above the support line, past the downward trend resistance lines from the all-time high. This is from the 483, right? So everything's good. You bounced, you like this was a clear indication that since you guys, not clear, but bounced off it, and now solidified it and went up to the continuous upward trend support line, this would have been the best time to get in for uh, GameStop around the $42 price point. Like, But the problem is everything is hypothetically a gamble, but either way, so you guys are above the moving averages, MACD line crossed over to the positive. Honestly, I think everything's smooth sailing for you guys right now, in my opinion, because the point that you guys need to pass is 1150. 1150 is gonna be a major task for you guys. If you guys pass 1150, literally right, okay, so right here, you see this? This is the last point I could see as resistance. 1150, whatever, you don't wanna have a false breakout. You can see right here, hypothetically, it was a false breakout at the 1163. You need to make sure that if you do break out, you actually break out completely to a point that, let's just say, I don't know, like, like I guess 1173 to carry you through. Because 1173 at least will count as support, 1176, something like that. But you guys have so much room to grow that you guys are headed back to uh, January 27th all-time highs movement. So I don't think anything is gonna stop you guys. What you guys need to be looking at is mainly support levels, and that's what it is. So the main support level that will keep you guys through that you could arguably dip down to is the $87 price point, $87, $88, somewhere around there. If you wanna be like conservative, $86, stuff like that. Um, I don't think it's gonna go any lower than that. So, um, but I'll tell you guys how high you could potentially go for tomorrow. So the first resistance levels that you guys obviously have is the $150 price point. If, this is without pre-market though, so it's kind of difficult. So 11, 11, 100, $114, let's just say first one. After 11, or, okay, 114, then 140, 139, then 150, then you have a 200, well, 176, I guess, but 200, 205, 206, but man, if you guys hit that level tomorrow, like definitely, definitely gonna be flying, in my opinion. But the main focus first is 150. 150 and then the 200 is in play, questionably in play. So there's that. But if you are thinking you're gonna just go to the downside, you're looking at the, again, 87, 86, 88, and then I guess you could say you guys could touch 78. I don't think you're gonna go any lower. Like I stated, 87, 86, 88. But like, man, no way you guys are gonna go lower than 78, 79. I think if you come down, you're definitely gonna back test that 87, 86 and just come back up and spike up to the upside. But everything is looking good. 
I don't like there's not really much to comment on about besides just the spike up and the resistance levels and support levels. But the main focus again, just to recap for GameStop, you need to pass $150 a share. That's the main focus. If you guys pass that and not have a false breakout and touch like 100, and, let's just say 180, not even 176, just to make sure, then you guys are definitely headed up back up to January 27th highs, right, of $483. I know during that time it actually hit higher, which is weird. I don't know how it's not registering, but that's the that's the case. But overall, everything's good. Honestly, congratulations for the ones who held and had diamond hands throughout the whole entire time. Now for AMC, same thing. AMC is even more crazier because, well, in terms of like obviously profits, GameStop is definitely more beneficial hypothetically. But for uh, uh, AMC, the movement is insane. So you had a downward trend resistance line dating back from uh, 2016 right here. And uh, the crazy part is, it's almost like who cares about that because you guys had an upward trend support line right here, multiple points right there, carry through, you had a U-shaped recovery right here, so coming down downward trend resistance line, broke it, consolidated for quite a while, and then had an upward trend support line right here, and just like that, like just breaking through major resistance right here. So af after hours, and this is not even pre-market, just broke through it, now the next resistance level that you're looking at is about 1095, so essentially $11. If you guys pass uh, $11.63 tomorrow, you guys are in great shape. I think you guys are already in great shape because what you need to do is, even if you come back down to this resistance level, you need to bounce off it. So this is not the line I need to draw. Uh, one sec, sorry about that. So the, line, the way, even if you come back down, again, this is without pre-market, you need to just bounce up to the upside. So you're looking at, I think it's a $10 price point. I think this line's not drawn correctly, but it says 980. But hopefully you guys do not go back down 980 at, during the pre-market. If you do, don't worry. You just need to bounce up to the upside. Um, you still have support, the support upward trend support line intact right now at the moment. So if you do drop down, you could hypothetically drop down to the nine, I guess 909, 907 still. But I think you guys are still in good shape. Upward trend line still get intact. You guys broke through major resistance. That $10 was a major task. $10.11 specifically, which is crazy because this is the after hours price, but the $10.11 is actually the major resistance level that I saw when I checked it the other time. But overall good, upward trend support line right here. It formed another upward trend support line. You guys are doing great. And uh, the resistance levels to keep in mind again is pretty much the $10.95, $11 price point. Like I stated earlier, it was like 11.63, 11.65. You guys need to clear that. The highest I think you guys could have tomorrow though is the 12, uh, what was it? Yeah, right about here, 12.71. If you guys go higher than that, honestly, props to you guys, it's awesome. But I think 12.71 might be a, a stoppage point for you guys for tomorrow. But if you guys think this is a false breakout and how low will you guys go for tomorrow, then uh, let me see. You. The, the thing is, the good thing is though, all these resistance levels are gonna act as support now. So that's that's the plus side. And like I stated earlier, with that uh, 909, 907 kind of stuff, that is gonna be the first line, not the first line of defense, but one of them, first of all. And uh, the next one is, yeah, okay. I don't think you guys are gonna go lower than $9, to be honest. But if you are thinking you're gonna go lower, the first one is 867, next one's 843. Next is not uh, 812, but to be honest, if you guys break through these levels, let me just draw this just in case. If you guys break through these levels, you, you can't, you're gonna have to be a little bit worried. That's the problem. So let's see, because you're above, by the way, keep in mind, I don't know if I said it for AMC because I said it for other stocks. You're above the moving averages, MAC lines in the positive, everything is looking great. Like, and plus tomorrow you got the fear of missing out from new investors that are seeing the action movement. So tomorrow is gonna be a great day regardless. But if you go lower than, cause you wanna anticipate false breakouts too. If you go lower than 770 tomorrow, something's wrong because then you're gonna have to be worried because you're breaking a bunch of support levels at that point. Um, but if you wanna be conservative and worried, 830, 838, somewhere around there, 838, hopefully you guys bounce up to the upside. So in case if you're just wondering what I mean exactly by that, let's just say it bounces up, comes down, whatever, bounces up, comes down. If you break 838 right here and not have a false breakout and bounce back up to the upside, you might get shot down here, it doesn't matter. But if you do not bounce up to the upside around 830 price point, it doesn't have to be specifically 838, 830 price point and bounce up to the upside, then I would start to be worried a little bit. Not fully though, because you still have this upward trend support line intact, just to let you know. 
Now for Nokia, Nokia is the one that I'm a little bit concerned about in terms of long term, not long term, but like short long term. You guys are fine, but it, you guys don't seem to have that momentum fully as the other stocks at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, and I'm going to show. So, um, like I've showed in the past, you guys have, da have double downward trend resistance line dating back since like 2000, 2001, going right here. Now you guys did back test it recently in the August 2020, and uh, you guys are heading back up to it. I don't, I didn't fix that line earlier from the other video, but you have an upward trend support line happening, so that's good. So it's still promising. And uh, let me see if I could get it into play right here. Okay, I guess it just keeps moving, whatever, it's not a big deal. But you have an upward trend support line happening, so you guys are still good in terms of short term, long term to move to the upside, right? And then you have an upward trend support line. Sorry about that. I'm all over the place right now for this, for Nokia. Unfortunately, sorry about that. But upward trend support line happening. You guys are above both moving averages. MAC lines crossed over in the positive. Now, my anticipation tomorrow is you guys need to, you need to open up, not open above, but like pass through 422. Because then if you pass past 422, you'll be part of like, not you're already part of the Wall Street movement, but you need to like, Make sure you cement your like self as moving with Wall Street bet completely. So 422 is going to be a major task for you guys to pass. 422, 423. Once you pass that, then then you guys are in good shape. You guys are moving good. So 432 will be the next resistance level that you're going to have. And then after that, yes, arguably the 439. But let's see. Actually, yeah, fourth. Did I say fourth? Uh, yeah. So 4 430, 431. But then 4 439. But 450, I think you guys will be heading up to because you have that upward trend support line. You have the other one that I had earlier that I showed from this one. Can you guys do? So overall, I think you guys are in good shape. I think in my opinion, you guys bottomed out, but that's my opinion. Um, not necessarily bottomed out like forever, but bottomed out to where you might want to get in at this point. Again, just, just, just my opinion, not advice. I'm not investing in Nokia FYI, so I have no like hypothetical benefits to tell you to buy in or to sell or anything. Um, so there's that uh, But yeah, hopefully and if you're not optimistic and you think that's a uh, false breakout and we're heading back down then Honestly, like I think you guys are just gonna slowly so 399 you have quite a bit of support at the four dollar price point by the way So four dollar price point for 399 and you'll just be basically coming back down to the three 397 395 around there I don't think you guys are gonna go any lower than four dollars tomorrow like not four dollars. Sorry about that 397 395 that's the utmost lowest. If you guys do go lower than that, I'll let you guys know. But if you were to bounce off anything, I think it would be bouncing off at the $4 price point. $3.99 specifically, to be exact. But if you're not optimistic, again, $3.97, $3.95. But $3.99 if you think our mediocre will bounce off like false breakout and then bounce back up to the upside. So essentially from like 4.14, let's just say right now, from the pre-market or after, market, after hours, come back down to $3.98, $3.99. I think $3.99 and then bounce up to the upside. And then pretty much, actually, let's just draw this upward trend support line right here. This is pretty bad, but let's just see. And so if we go off that, yeah, like like around the 402, $4 price point, I don't, I don't see anything lower than that. But 402, you might even open tomorrow at the 414, come down at the 402, because keep in mind, just like all the Wall Street bet stocks, there might be selling because people are just want to grab, grab profits, but then there's going to be the FOMO, so fear of missing out, bouncing out both of them. So regardless, even if there's a dip, I think there's going to be a dip and bounce up to the upside. So that dip and uh, upside I drew first was wrong. It's going to be like that. Or if you're not optimistic, it will be that. But if you're optimistic and you think it's still going to drop and go up to the upside, it's going to be like essentially that. So we'll see what happens. Those are the upsides. Those are the downsides. Again, like always, um, if you guys did enjoy the video, uh, consider dropping a like. It helps the channel a lot. Thank you so much for that. If you have any questions, I'm sure you guys do, do not hesitate to ask. I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Um, and if you do like videos in terms of stocks, passive income, mortgages, um, credit scores, so on and so forth, consider subscribing. It really helps the channel. Thank you guys so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.